By the time of the death of Genghis Khan in 1227, he had laid the foundations of the Mongol Empire. Through charisma and military skill, he united the Mongols into a new confederation and established Mongol supremacy in northern China, Central Asia, and even parts of Persia. Genghis was content to rule through his control of the army and never established any form of central government or provincial administration. Most nomadic states had been ruled through alliances with other tribal leaders. Genghis's experiences made him distrustful of Mongol tribes. Because he spent much of his time in his rule on, a, on the move, he never set up a capital. His successors, however, would at a city called Karakorum. His heirs would continue the campaigns of expansion, but it fell to them to design a more durable imperial structure. Before his death, Genghis actually divided the empire into four sections, or khanates, to be administered over by a son or grandson. The great Khan would rule China. The descendants of another son would rule Central Asia. The ill Khans would rule Persia, and the Golden Horde would rule Russia. He was succeeded as great Khan by his third son, Ogadeh who was proclaimed supreme leader in 1229, according to his father's wishes. Under his leadership, Mongol expansion continues, deep into Afghanistan and Persia, China, Korea, Armenia, Georgia, and Eastern Europe. Only Ogadeh's death could have prevented the complete conquest of Europe. After his death, civil war breaks out amongst the Khans, and the four Khanate structure results in the division of the realm into four regional empires. For as long as the Mongol Empire existed, ambition fueled constant tensions amongst the four Khans that controlled these regions. Under Ogadeh, the, Mo the Mongols of the Golden Horde launched invasions of Russia and Eastern Europe. Now, they raided small Russian states to the north, but they never occupied the region, although they did maintain a hegemony over Russia until the mid-15th century. Genghis' Genghis's grandson led armies into Tibet between 1251 and 1259 and continued to harass Korea. Around the same time, another grandson defeated the Islamic Abbasid Caliphate that controlled Persia, Palestine, and Syria. In 1258, he took Baghdad, executed the Caliph, and slaughtered 200,000. In 1260, his attempts to conquer all of the Middle East and Egypt was stopped in Syria by an Egyptian Mameluk army. When it came to governing, the Mongols adopted different tactics in, or in the different lands that they controlled. In Persia, they made concessions to local, local interests. Mongols occupied all the highest positions, but the Persians served as ministers, provincial governors, and high-ranking state officials. They allowed the Persians to administer the Okhanate so long as they de delivered the tax receipts and maintained order. Now, initially, the Mongol rulers would observe their native shamanism, but they were tolerant of all other faiths. In Persia, the Mongol elite gradually converted to Islam. In 1295, Ilkhan Ghazan publicly embraced Islam, and most Mongols in Persia followed his lead. His conversion was the continuation of the phenomenon that Mesopotamia conquers the conquerors. Ghazan's conversion led to, to a large-scale massacre of Christians and Jews. The conversion to Islam posed a problem for independent Mongol women, who agreed to adopt some aspects of Islamic women's culture, but by no means all.